Hello, great people. It's an awesome privilege to have you this evening. I wanted to share this video to anyone who is on your timeline who you wish to be blessed too from this uh, broadcast this night. I believe that God is going to bless everyone who wanted to share this video Why I also invite other persons. This evening, God is going to speak to you. God has prepared a word to bless you and he has also prepared words to bless myself too. So I'd want you to share this video to people, share it to anyone you want to be blessed as well. God is doing a great thing this night. You want to partake of this very grace. Mephibosheth's grace. Oh, that story is something else. If you've ever heard of Mephibosheth in the scripture, or if not, I believe it's an awesome time for you to become blessed too. Invite people to watch the video. I believe it's a time to share testimonies. It's a time of grace. It's a time of uh, miracles. It's a time that God is going to do great and mighty things. I believe that it's, it's not an accident that you're watching this video this night. God is going to do something marvelous in your life. Invite people, share the video, and invite people to become blessed too. Now, the, the, the caption of our video this evening is that the grace that money cannot buy. There is a grace that money cannot buy. There is a grace that money cannot buy. Now, we've painted this picture that it looks like for you to connect to someone's grace, you have to give the person money, you have to know. The, there is a finished work in the cross of, on the cross of Calvary that you just have to channel in. Now, follow me to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 4, verse 4. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet. Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that is lame of his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul. And Jonathan out of Jezreel and his nurse took him and fled. And it came to pass as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame. And his name was maybe Foshet. This is a story of maybe Foshet. How he became lame, lame at the age of five. Now, Mephibosheth is the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul. Don't forget that Saul is the king, the person that has always hunted to kill David. He has always been on a hunt. He has always been on the lookout to kill David. Now, look at how the story turns out. In the book of same Second Samuel chapter 9, verse 1, the same David who was being hunted to be killed by Saul. Remember, Jonathan is son's son. So Mephibosheth is the grandson of Saul. Now, David said, and David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? He wants to show someone kindness from the house of Saul. The same Saul who had always wanted him dead. The same Saul who had always wanted to kill him. That is why I start the topic of this video. God bless you, Nancy. God bless you. Invite your people, invite your friends to join this video. God is going to do something great in our lives this night. The same David that was haunted by Saul to be killed. Now, David is going to the house of Saul. To ask, is there any other person left in the house of Saul that I might show the person, uh, uh, what did he say? That I might show the person favor. He said, and David said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I might show the person kindness? Ha, Rembrush Katayada. I don't know who is looking out for you to kill you. Who has forgotten you? This video was streamed this night to tell you that God is causing that person to have a sleepless night until the person comes to ask after you to show you kindness. Listen, I, I want you to pick a picture of this story. If you follow up the story, then your miracle is about to be born. That is why the topic of the video you are watching is that grace, there is a grace that money cannot buy. There is a grace that you don't need to pay anybody to partake of that grace. There is a grace that money cannot buy. And that grace is found in the scripture I am reading to you now. Maybe Foshet was lame from the age of five. 
Now, when there was war in the land of uh, in the in, in the land of Israel, when people were running helter scatter helter, people were running into safety. The nurse that was to take was to take care of maybe for shit. The nurse that was to look after him carried him to run for safety. It is not source uh, maybe for shit's fault that he had a lame leg that he got his leg his legs broken. It was because they were running to safety. To save this young child that the child fell out of the nurse's hand and this child had a lame leg lame legs the child couldn't walk now David going to the house of Saul instead of him to finish up the remaining of of, of, of springs pardon me instead of him to finish up the remaining gratitude he said please is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? For Jonathan's sake. It was not for Mephibosheth's sake. It was not because Mephibosheth did anything that desired that David would show him kindness. Now, I want you to take note of this. There are reasons why Mephibosheth, as a human being, should have given up in life. One, I should remember that in the case of Mephibosheth, it was not his fault that he was lame. Now, the reason that maybe for sure should have given up as a human being is because of these reasons that I'm reading out for you. Number one, maybe for sure stayed in a place called Lodeba. In the Old Testament, the meaning of Lodeba is a place where nobody lived. It is a place where there is no pasture. It is a place where there is no word. It is a place where hunger and starvation strived in. So maybe for shit as a human being had these two reasons to give up in life. The second reason why maybe for shit should have given up in life is because he is disabled. He's a cripple. Now in the Old Testament, in, in, the, in the present generation, it is what we call PW, PWDS. Now it is called a curse. It is seen as a cause for somebody to be crippled in the Old Testament. So he had a reason, two reasons for him to give up on his life. He had two reasons for him to forget about his life. He had natural reasons for him to say, this life I am giving up. Maybe Foshet had that reason to say, even though he gave up as a human being, he had a justifiable reason. Why? He dwelt in a place called Lodeba. It is a place where there is no sound. It is a place where there is no life. It is a place where there is no food. It is a place, as to, it is a place that it has to do with starvation and hunger. He had the reason to say, no, 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 no. I cannot go on. He had the reason to say, no, 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 no. I cannot keep going on again. Maybe Foshet had the reasons to give up. The second reason he had again was because he's disabled. He could not walk. Remember the story. Maybe Foshet had a nurse. He is the son of Jonathan. And Jonathan is the son of Saul. Saul has been looking out for David to kill. Now, during war, the nurse that was carrying Mephibosheth, because he wanted to run for state safety, Mephibosheth fell off her hands and he was, he, he, he was uh, crippled. From the age of five till adulthood, Mephibosheth could not walk. So, in the Old Testament, when you cannot walk, you are seen as somebody that is caused. When you are crippled, you are seen as someone that God has caused. So, Mephibosheth moved out of where human beings stays. And he stayed in a place called Ledoba. And he had every reason to say, I am giving up. Just like someone, someone watching, you have every reason to give up that you will not marry again. You have every reason to give up that you will not have a child again. Yes, natural reasons. Yes, naturally those reasons are, nobody should kill you. Those reasons are true. Nobody should fight you. Those reasons are true. The reasons that you don't want, you can no longer feed yourself. Those reasons are naturally true. Don't crucify yourself. Don't kill yourself. Those reasons are genuine. Don't kill yourself. Just like maybe Foshet had genuine reason to give up. Maybe Foshet had genuine reason to say he's giving up. Maybe Foshet had the reason to go and stay where human beings are not. Just like you have a reason to say you are not going to school again. Just like you have a reason to say you are not going to church again. Yes, they fought, they, they, they've attacked you. They did this. Just like you have a reason to say you are not worshipping God again. Those natural reasons, nobody is killing you. They are right. But listen to 2 Samuel chapter 9 verse 1. And David said, Is there yet anyone that is left of the house of Saul that I might show him kindness? 
the same David that Saul had been looking for to kill, the same David that Saul had been looking for to kill. Now look at in verse. Pardon me, Second Samuel chapter nine, from verse one. Look at what David said. And David said, Is there yet anyone that is left in the house of Saul that I might show him kindness? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And they called him and said unto Saul, King unto him, thou art Ziba. And he said, Thy servant is here. In verse 9, Then the king called unto Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thee my master's soul, all that pertaining to Saul, unto the house of Saul. Now look at verse 10. Thou therefore and thy son and thy servant shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruit that thy servant, that thy master's son may have food to eat, but may be for sure that thy master's son shall eat bread always at my table. The same may be for sure who is accursed. The same may be for sure who looks like he is cursed. The same may be for sure who has every reason to give up in life. David brought him. The same may be for sure that David should kill because his grandfather Saul wanted to kill him. Maybe for the same David brought maybe for shit and said, You will eat on my table forever. I don't know who is looking down on you. I don't know what is making you look down on yourself. I don't know what is making you say that it's over. I don't know what is making you look say that life is over. No, don't judge yourself. Maybe Fochette was in the same shoes. Maybe Fochette was in the same shoes. Maybe Fochette also had the same natural reason to give up on himself. But hear me. There is this grace that answered to him. There is this grace that called on him. There is this grace that took him out from Ledoba, a place of hunger, a place of thirst, a place of wantonness. There is this grace that pulled him out of there and took him to the king's table. Until he was old, maybe for sure kept dining with David. Maybe for sure that was a leper, that he was cursed. Because when once you are a leper, you are cursed. He kept on dining with David over and over and over and over again. Now, here is that grace that you don't need to buy with money. Here is that grace that money cannot buy. Here is that grace that you don't need to give any money to a partake of that grace. What is that grace? It is Jesus Christ. The finished work of Christ on Calvary. You may not be, maybe, maybe for sure. You may not have any King David any longer. Now, it is a replay of what happened now that is happening today. Jesus is that King David that has died for you. Jesus is that man now standing on the table, calling you forth from Ledoba, calling you out from the place that people see that is a, uh, you are a leper, that you cannot afford to feed yourself. You cannot afford to do things that people will look at you and call you a human being. Jesus Christ is that person. That grace that you need to partake on, you don't need to pay again. That grace, you don't need to pay again. That is the grace Jesus has delivered to you. The cross of Calvary where he sacrificed, where he was sacrificed is the same grace. It is the same as what has happened to Mephibosheth. I hope you followed up the story. David is supposed to kill Mephibosheth because he's the grandson of Saul, the man that wanted him dead. Jesus Christ is supposed to crucify us Jesus Christ is supposed to carry us and hand over to the devil himself. But he crucified himself and said, No, the devil will not kill you again. No, you will not die of hunger. No, you will not die of sickness. Now you will dine on my table till the day I will come again. That is the grace you have to partake of now. That is the grace that God has delivered to you. That is the grace that God has delivered to you. That is the grace that God has delivered to me. Just like maybe Foshet, he had a reason to give up. Jesus Christ is telling you that there is no reason for you to give up again in life. Let me tell you something. Some want to give up because of COVID-19. Some want to give up because of educational status. Some want to give up because they don't know what to eat next. Should I tell you the truth? Don't look elsewhere. Don't look to the church. Don't look to the man of God. Don't look to the fellow human being. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. May before she had nobody to look up. Look after this broadcast, go and study the book of 2 Samuel chapter 4 till chapter 9. May before she had every reason to say this life, I am tired. He had every reason to commit suicide. He had just like you have every reason to say, oh, I've won after this man, another man, after another man, another young man. 
and I am tired of heartbreaks. I am tired of looking up to men. I am tired of uh, believing that I will get married. I am tired of believing that I will have my child. I am tired of believing that I will have my car. I am tired of believing that I will have this contract. No. You have the right to feel like that. It is natural. But the another right you have that I am giving you now is to plug in into that grace, the finished work of Christ. You don't need money to tap into this grace. You know what? Jesus has opened his arms. He has set the table. And just like David pulled that Mabifo shirt from the land of begging, just like Jesus, uh, uh, the King David pulled, pulled that Mabifo shirt from Ledoba, Jesus is pulling you out from the spiritual Ledoba. Jesus is pulling you out from the Ledoba of barrenness. Jesus is pulling you forth from the Ledoba of hunger. Jesus is pulling you forth. He's saying, come and partake in this table. He's saying, come and partake in this table. Come and dine with me. No, I know you are crying that uh, I, I, you don't have any means of survival. Jesus is saying, come and dine with me. This grace I am offering you, you don't have to buy it with money. Should I tell you something? It's in your mind. It's in your mind. Maybe Foshet should have told David, no, I am crippled, I can't follow you to, the, to your kingdom. I am crippled, I can't follow you to the, to, the, to, the, to the palace. I can't sit with you in the palace. When I sit with you in the palace to eat with you, how will the other, other, or, or, other king's uh, men look at me? Maybe Foshet did not say that. When David said, maybe Foshet, follow me. You are the house of Saul. I want to show you kindness. Maybe for sure you not say, Go. no, David, King David, I can't walk. Anyone that cannot walk is a cost. Anyone that cannot walk is looked at someone that is cost. No, maybe for sure did not do that. Maybe for sure believed that the king has called him and he followed the king. Jesus has called you. Follow him. Jesus has called you. Follow him. Jesus is calling you to dine with him. That is the only grace you need to plug into. Jesus is calling you. It's as simple as this. You have a sickness in your body. Jesus has called you just like David called that maybe for shirts from Ledoba. You cannot afford food. Jesus is calling you to dine with him. Oh God, bet you. Now Jesus is about to do something in your life. I have no other God. Bet you, I have no other God but you. 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 Mananarash kumbayada elis kandayada. I have no other God but you. Yere gabadosh kandayada. You have done. What no man can do, Marada yara bushke dilili. You will do what no man can do. I don't know who is there. You are watching. You are feeling you don't have anywhere to go to. You are feeling you don't know how to survive. God is telling me, tell you, you don't have anyone but God. Put your heart in God, and He alone is about to do something great in your life there is no one but god there is no, no one but god there is no one but god there is no one but god you don't have to put your hope on anybody you don't have it is a finished work in the cross of calvary just plug in your heart now i thought a message about maybe for shed about maybe for shed for those of you who are just plugging in it's just a summary a summary maybe for shed gave up in life but David, who should have killed him because he's the grandson of somebody that wanted to kill him, gave him favor, brought him to the table of kindness. Now I decree in the name of Jesus to those of you who have given up in life, the same God who has shown us mercy, the same God who has shown us mercy, the same God who did not charge us of a dime for Jesus to die on the cross of Calvary, I decree that same God visit you right now in the name of Jesus. 
look, I have seen testimonies to, to doubt God. I have seen enough testimony for me to begin to doubt God. From my birth to this age, I know that God has, has something great, something, something mighty to do, even in the lives of people. God wants to do something in your life. Something that will, the only thing that will make this miracle not to happen is your mind. Take off anything that you've been taught. Take off anything that you believed from your mind. That you have to do this, you have to do that before God can do something in your life. It's a lie. You don't have to do anything for God to have, do a miracle in your life. You don't have to do anything for God to give you miracles. You don't have to do anything for God to give you miracles. The only thing you have to do is to connect your mind to the finished work in the, in the cross of Calvary. As long as your mind is connected, God is going to do something in your mind. Join me in prayers and God will give you that miracle. I decree, I decree that thing you have set your mind in. God will do it right now. God will do it right now. God will do it right now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody watching. You are believing God for the healing of your mother. I don't know where your mother is. I decree right now that she is healed. Somebody share this video. I decree that your mother is healed in the name of Jesus. I decree that your mother is healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody that you are believing God for marriage, you have done everything you need to do. Let me tell you something. You've even sow seed for your marriage to come. It does not come like that. You want to make God to believe you want to buy it with money. It's a lie. You can't buy it with money. It's only for you to believe in the finished work and the cross of Calvary. That is the grace that money cannot buy. If you, Once you believe that your money can buy it, once you believe that it's your seed that will get it, it's a lie, you will not get it. It is the finished work and the cross of Calvary. That is that grace that may be for shed enjoyed. And I decree now, it is happened. If God is the one speaking, I decree you will encounter testimonies this weekend. This will be the weekend of testimony. That thing that God has destined to help you, that king will not have rest until that king comes to your domain. Until that king comes to a place. Oh, I decree. Nancy, God was speaking about your mom. And the same God who delivered this prophecy visits your mom now. In the name of Jesus. The same God who, who revealed to us. The same God who revealed to me that somebody that is watching. You have your mom and that is sick in the, in the hospital. The same God who spoke and you confirmed by, command, by commenting that it's your mom. I decree that your mom is healed. Your mom has nobody but God. Your mom has nobody but the blood of Jesus that has finished the work at the cross of Calvary. I decree in the name of Jesus. The same God that said that somebody's mother is sick and you commented that it's your mother. I decree your mother is, is healed. You will testify before this weekend is over. You will send a message that your mother was healed. In the name of Jesus, I decree your mother is discharged now in the name of Jesus. Somebody again, somebody watching, it, it has to do with your younger brother. I don't know where your younger brother is. Your younger brother is battling with death. I don't know what disease is. I decree your younger brother is, the, is released from that evil attack in the name of Jesus. Your younger brother is released from that evil attack. I don't know where you are watching from, but it is your younger brother. I decree he is released from that attack in the name of Jesus. Someone else that is watching, I tell you something. God is very, very, very wonderful. You have done so many things and you are asking God, why has this breakthrough not come true? I am telling you that that breakthrough will only come true by the time you believe that it has to do with the grace of God and not with what you have done, not with the, the seeds you have sown, not with the services you have rendered God. You cannot buy it. It is only by the grace of God that it will happen. You have done so many things and you are asking God, why has it not come to pass? Now remove your mind from those things you've done. Remove your mind from those seeds you've sown. Remove your mind from those offerings you've given. Remove your mind from those things you think that that is what God will use. You cannot buy it. It is that grace that money cannot buy. And that is what God is giving me to give to you. That is why we started with the message of Mebifoshet. Mebifoshet is the grandson of jo uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Saul. Saul had always wanted to kill David. It is, it is, it is my Oh, your PhD project. I decree in the name of Jesus. I decree in the name of Jesus your PhD project. Anything that is holding it to come out as a success is coming out now in the name of Jesus. 
as long you see god says that he prospers the work of our hands your phd project is the work of your hands in as long as you have placed your hand on it i decree that your phd project comes out with a success in the name of jesus let me share this testimony with you for you to believe the work of god last two saturdays during the saturdays of deep uh, um uh, Psalms, deep revelation and prophecies. I prophesied that a young man lost his job because of the COVID-19. And we prayed. This young man called him. And immediately, God surprised him with the things he was bidding for. God gave him a testimony. I decree in the name of Jesus, as many as you, as of, uh, that God has mentioned your case, this, I decree your testimony is coming. Your te do you know why I am smiling? You have nothing to do. You don't have anything to do for this testimony to come to pass. You don't have any money to pay. You don't have anything to do. You don't have any seed to sow for God to answer this prayer. This is not that type of prayer I am coming to pray. I am coming from the mentality of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was a limb. Mephibosheth was crippled. Mephibosheth was dwelling in a place called Ledoba. A Ledoba means a place that is no food. It means a place that is starvation. It means a place that, that is hunger. And secondly, he is crippled. He had unnatural reasons to give up in life. He, the third reason he had to give up in life is he is the grandson of Saul. Saul had always wanted to kill David. But all of a sudden, David went to, to Saul's uh, environment and asked, is there anyone that is from the family of Saul here? I want to show him kindness. Why? The same sword that wanted to kill him. And they told him that there is somebody. His name is Mephibosheth. He is a cripple. Now David knew the scripture. Why will David carry a cripple to the kingdom? Why will David carry a cripple to, the, to his palace? Why will David carry somebody that is caused? Because in the Old Testament, when once you are crippled, you are caused. But David said he want to show kindness to the person that wanted to kill him. He showed kindness to the son of the someone that wanted to kill him. Maybe Foshet had three reasons for him not to enjoy kindness. He was a cursed person. He was a cripple. He was someone that was dwelling in a place that was a cost. He was the son of somebody that wanted to kill David. But David carried him and told him, you will eat in the tables, you, you will eat on the on, on the table of the king as long as you live. And maybe Foshet kept on enjoying the on the on the table on the king's table. Now, this is a picture of what Jesus has done. Because of our sin, we are supposed to die. Because of that fornication you, you fornicated, you are supposed to die. Because of that thing you stole, you are supposed to die. Because of that person you caused, you are supposed to die. Because of that thing you stole, you are supposed to die. But Jesus came and he died for you. So you are no longer cursed. You no longer have to do anything. If you were supposed to do something, Jesus will not come. Jesus will not come. Then you will keep on doing and doing and doing things. You will keep on... You will keep on Sowing seeds, let me be raw. You will keep on buying buying favor. You will keep on sacrificing. You will keep on buying God to pay for your sin. But Jesus came. If that miracle have to happen, be, be, if mir that miracle have to happen after you have done something, then the death of Jesus in is in vain. That is why I'm bringing you this message. That grace that money cannot buy. As long as you have played down every seed you've sown, played down every offering you have you've you've given. Lay down every service you have rendered God. Tell God, this thing I did it out of my mind. I did not do it to buy anything. I did not do it to buy healing. I did not do it to do anything for you. I did it because I wanted to serve you. Now, let that grace of your finished work on the cross of Calvary answer to me now. Let that grace of your finished work on Calvary answer to me now. If you doubt God, many of you watching know my story. If you doubt God, many of you watching know my prayer degree. You don't know my father, you don't know my mother, but you know that I am someone who is always marching forward and forward and forward. You don't know anybody I can call my godfather. Why is it like that? Because Jesus, I am tapping into that finished grace. I am tapping into that finished grace. Don't think that I have never fallen sick. Don't think that I have never wanted to die. Don't think that I have never been in a missed death. Don't think that I have never been in a crossroad and asked God, what am I going to eat today? But that grace keeps on answering. I don't have a father, but the father in heaven has keeping, kept on answering to me. I am like a modern day maybe for shit. Now I bring you that same, that same message. I bring you that same grace. I bring you that same, uh, that, that same uh, uh, teaching tonight plug your faith to god miracles will take place in your heart miracles will take place in your life you don't have to do anything it is the finished work on the cross of calvary it is the finished work on the cross of calvary jesus has to do this jesus has to do it in your life that's why i'm decreeing in the name of jesus somebody watching somebody broke your heart last week saturday he called you 
and told you he is not he does not think this is for genuine you are watching somebody broke your heart i want to tell last week saw today god cannot lie he's saying it to me he said he broke your heart last week saturday do you know why it is because god is preparing somebody that will approach you this 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 month that person that broke your heart can never take you to the altar so now you plugged in into this video because god wants to console you that person broke your heart and you broke into this video god is telling me to tell you that in as much as he revealed this word to you it is to console you because that person had no future with you there is another person watching you had someone you had a dealing with a business dealing with and instead of the person to give you your com your complete weight what two of you discussed the person took and took to his heel with your money. You have even laid cost on the body, on the person. God is telling me to tell you to forgive the person. Carry the fight and plug it into that grace that money cannot buy and see how that grace will, will fight for you. There is another person watching. For the two persons I mentioned, your mother and your father's case, I decree that before this Saturday, you will send in a testimony, they will be discharged wherever they are, in the name of Jesus. I decree in the name of Jesus, healing in your body, healing in your spirit, soul and body, in the name of Jesus, from that same grace, the same grace that maybe Foshet enjoyed, I decree a financial breakthrough in your life, in the name of Jesus. There is no God but you. He has done what no man has done. Hashko Baradash Kata Legede Legede. Eko Paradash Kata Lagada. E Shombrada Lagada. Esko Pere Gadala. E Kadadesh Keteli Galagada. Asho Kerika Lagada Lagada. Oh, I have no. We have no other God but you. We have no other God but you. Father, perfect this words in the life of your people. Prove to them. Prove to them. Now listen to me. These prayers will not be as answered quickly if you have not given your life to Jesus. Say this prayer to me, with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me if there be any mistake I made even before watching this video that will make these prayers not to be answered. Forgive me. Write my name in the book of life. Remove it from the book of death and let that grace that I cannot pay for that Jesus delivered on the cross of Calvary. Let it answer to this prayer in the name of Jesus. There is no God but the God in heaven. As I end this video, I see you testifying very soon. In the name of Jesus. Ambrush Ketayalaga. Brace to Riga. Mendrush Katalagada. God bless you for watching. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I love you. See you once again. Bye.